Hi guys, today we're going to be doing something called pointillism and I'm going to explain a little bit about what that is and we're going to be using coffee and tea to do it so it's going to be a little bit um, different than maybe how I would normally do it. Um, I'm going to use coffee and tea because I know you guys have already worked with it when we did our coffee and tea paintings so you know what it's like and it's hopefully something that you have at home, at home that you can paint with. Um, so I went ahead and mixed up one cup of tea. I put four bags of tea in it and it's still going to be pretty light. This is going to be our light color. And the coffee, I mixed up this very uh, thick coffee sludge and I used instant coffee and I poured like about half of the container in there. Um, ask your parents before you start dumping all their coffee in, in a cup to paint with. Um, you can use regular coffee, it's not instant coffee. You will definitely need to wait for it to cool before you use it, and you would need a lot of coffee in that too, and it won't be quite as dark as the instant coffee. The really thick instant coffee makes the best um, paint to paint with, and you can make it with cold water. The tea I did let cool. So the tea was hot to begin with, and then I let it cool, and then I just have some water in case I want to water it down even more. I don't think I'll even be using the water today. So what pointillism is, it is using little tiny points or dots to create a, a picture. So you're going to be painting with little dots, and then um, you have to be pretty patient with it and fill in a whole area with dots and then um, it will make a picture out of it. So I'm going to show you guys an example. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And um, before I do that, I'll show you some examples. Oh, I just got coffee in my paper. I'll show you guys some examples that I did um, already. So this one on the top is supposed to be an eye. And I did that with my fingers. So I just painted with coffee with fingers. It's a little bit harder to control because the coffee is so wet and drippy. So it's kind of hard to get it um, in the right spots. And then the smiley face over here I did with um, Q-tips. And I'm going to be using Q-tips, I think. I haven't quite decided yet. I think I'll probably use Q-tips for today's project. Um, and then the fish on the bottom I did with an eraser tip on a pencil. So those are some examples that I've done up so far with the coffee and tea. I used just coffee on the fish and the um, the emoji, the smiley face, and um, I used both coffee and tea on the eye. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys an example of a very famous, probably the most famous pointillism painting that exists, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get started with our own art. Okay, this is the painting I wanted to show you guys. This is um, Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte um, by George Seurat. And it is a very, very famous painting. I've actually been able to see this one in person and it is gigantic. I wish I could uh, just like teleport you guys there so you could see it and you could know how big and amazing this painting is. Um, it is like taller than a person and um, width wise it's even wider than it is tall. So um, it's a very very large painting and he did it all using little tiny dots and strokes, little tiny strokes of color. Um, and it was a very like different kind of painting than anybody had ever really done before and it's a very large piece. It took him a long time. I think it took him like two years to complete it. Um, and it's it's really almost kind of like this is before you know computer screens and tv screens but it's almost like how they use little pixels of color and it used different kind of colors up close but then when you back away the colors kind of mix in your eye and then you see what they look like mixed so instead of mixing his paint on his palette first to make a color he will just put little dots of those different colors all in one place and then um, when you back away from it you your eye just kind of mixes them together so um, it's a really different kind of way of painting and it looks really kind of weird up close because it's like these random little dots of color and then you back away and you can see all the detail and see what it is 
Um, I wish that I could discuss this with you guys in class. Um, let me know in comments, like, what, what are some things you notice about this painting? Does anybody see the monkey? Um, what, what do you think about this painting? How does it make you feel? So um, let me know those kind of things. Um, uh, and just what do you think about pointillism, especially after we get done trying it on our own? So this is probably the most famous painting ever for pointillism. It's like the example that most people give when they talk about pointillism. Um, and it was, you know, something really different that people hadn't really seen before. So um, let's go ahead and get started on our own pointillism project. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a heart on this paper and then I'm going to fill it in with dots and I'm going to try to make the bottom really thick and dark. The dots really close together and a lot of coffee on my q-tip. I think I'm going to use q-tip and then I'm going to try to get lighter as I go up and space out my dots um, farther apart. So let's see how that goes. let it dry first and then go over it, let it dry again, let it go over it to get it this dark. And I'm not sure I'm entirely happy with it. I feel like maybe I should have just left it um, after the first time. But it was fun to do some pointillism today. Hope you guys try this out. Um, just want to leave you guys with a drawing prompt for this week. Imagine that you can create your own video game, any video game, and draw something from the video game, either a scene from it or an object in it. Draw something from a video game that you um, would create yourself. Okay, so see you guys next time. Bye.